Becoming a star may be difficult, but remaining a star is definitely a Herculean task. More often than not, we see celebrities who get to the height of stardom but find it difficult to keep it going, eventually fading out into nothingness as quickly as they got to those heights. For this reason, celebrities who maintain their star status are often seen as the best in the business. And today, we are going to be talking about one such legend. In this video, we are going to be looking at the incredible life of Shelley Winters and her illustrious career that spanned over 60 years. Maintaining the star status for that long is definitely a feat that can't go unnoticed. Before we go on, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button to become a member of this amazing community. Without further ado, let's get started. Early Life Born in St. Louis, Missouri on August 18, 1920, Shelley Schrift was the second daughter of Jonas Schrift, a clothing designer, and Rose Schrift, who was a singer working at the Mooney, also known as St. Louis Municipal Opera Theater. Her parents were of Austrian descent, hailing from Green Marlow, and were actually third cousins in a Jewish family. She spent most of her childhood in Missouri and moved to Brooklyn, New York at the age of nine so that her father could get better jobs since New York was the hub of the fashion industry. However, her father was wrongly jailed for arson, which disrupted their lives. Thankfully, he was exonerated after a year, but she had to spend time in Queens, New York. While in high school, she was already making extra income by participating in beauty contests, most of which she won by a wide margin. Her exotic European beauty was definitely a head-turner, which gave her an unfair advantage in these contests. But all is fair in love, war, and beauty contests after all. She dropped out of high school to work as a model and soon became a local celebrity, featuring in local magazines and newspapers. At the age of 16, she moved to Los Angeles where she worked at the Circle Theater, now called El Centro Theater. The theater was run by her sister's husband, George Boroff, so it was easy getting a job. Shelley fell in love with acting and started taking acting classes, working as a store clerk, a model, and a corn at a nightclub to pay for her expensive classes. Career. Shelley's journey to stardom was, in fact, a tumultuous journey, mainly because of all the competition she was facing. Almost every girl wanted to be an actress during the golden ages of Hollywood. She made her first appearance in the Broadway comedy show titled The Night Before Christmas in 1941, followed by another role in Rosalinda in 1942. In both of these shows, she used the stage name Shelley Winter, taking her mother's maiden name. It was changed to Winters later in her career. Soon enough, she began pushing for a career in Hollywood and even got a few roles, but most of her roles were cut out of the main films, and the rest were just insignificant roles that barely got her any recognition. One would expect that someone as beautiful as she was would get a one-way ticket to stardom, but the exposure she got didn't allow her to shine, even with all that beauty. After appearing in movies like What a Woman, The Racket Man, Cover Girl, and Tonight and Every Night, she finally hit stardom with roles in both stage and screen productions in 1947. On Broadway, she appeared as Otto Annie in Oklahoma and a party girl waitress in A Double Life. She performed so excellently, she immediately landed a lucrative long-term contract with Universal Pictures. She went on to take supporting roles in several other movies like Larceny and Cry of the City in 1948 and in The Great Gatsby the following year. Following the amazing reviews, she instantly became very sought after and was instantly hit with a barrage of roles that had her appearing alongside some of the world's finest actors at the time. Her first Oscar nomination came for her role in A Place in the Sun in 1951. Her beauty was her main selling point, and that was what the production houses she worked with focused on, portraying her as a blonde bombshell. One of the producers even suggested that she get a nose job done so she can fit the billing perfectly, but she declined. She began to hate the image she was getting and returned to New York to take some more acting classes. She earned her spot in the famous actor's studio and at the Hollywood Studio Club after that. At one time, she shared a room with the famous Marilyn Monroe while at the Hollywood Studio Club. Upon her return to Hollywood, she completely changed the narrative and went from a blonde bombshell to a highly respected actress. She began to take international jobs and spent the most part of her later years traveling and making films in Europe. She also made a return to Broadway starring in A Hatful of Rain and Girls of Summer. Despite several nominations, she won her first Oscar award in 1960 for her supporting role as Mrs. Van Dan in The Diary of Anne Frank. After this, she went on to win another Best Supporting Actress Oscar in 1965, a Golden Globe Award in 1972, and a Primetime Emmy Award in 1964. Personal Life Winters was married four times, first to Captain Mac Paul Mayer, 
They got married in December 1942, but their relationship was kept very private because he wasn't a celebrity and didn't like the glamour of celebrity life. They divorced six years later because he wanted a more traditional wife. She, however, wore the wedding ring he gave her until she died and preferred not to discuss their marriage. In April 1952, she got married to Vittorio Gossman, an Italian actor and director with whom she had one child, Vittoria. Vittoria is currently a physician at Norwalk Hospital in Connecticut, where she works as a geriatric medicine specialist. Her marriage to Gossman lasted only two years, divorcing barely a year after Vittoria's birth. In 1957, she got married to Anthony Franchosa, an American actor, but they didn't last so long together and got divorced three years later. Franchosa was known for his fierce temper, which had a devastating effect on his marriage to Winters. Her last marriage was on her deathbed, barely hours before she breathed her last. Staring in the face of death made her realize how much she wanted to marry her longtime boyfriend, Gary DeFord. They had lived together for nearly 19 years and were always seen in public together. Her daughter Vittoria objected to the marriage, but it still took place. However, with Sally Kirkland performing the wedding ceremony and a few hours later, the last rites for Winters. Aside from her marriages, she had a romantic relationship with fellow actor Farley Granger Jr., which later became a long-term friendship. She was also good friends with Janis Joplin, the rock singer. Death On January 14, 2006, Winters died at the age of 85 from heart failure at a rehabilitation center in Beverly Hills. On the day she died, Anthony Franchosa, her third husband, also suffered a stroke and passed away five days later. And that's all the time we have today. For more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and stay tuned. Also, leave a like on this video and tell us what you think in the comments section. While you wait for a new video, check out our previous videos and remember to give them a thumbs up too. See you soon.